Australia is now a grown up, mature nation. Uh, we have our own unique identity and culture. Uh, we're making our own way in the world. We govern ourselves independently. And many Australians believe it's time for us to have a serious discussion about appointing one of our own as our head of state in the future. What do you do on a day to day basis? How do you prepare for Australia's transition to a republic? Well, at the moment, I'm putting together a plan for an education campaign in Australia. Um, it's been close to 25 years since we've had this issue on the agenda in Australia, and there's quite a generation of people that aren't au fait with the arguments. Mm. Um, the, Labor gov the newly elected Labor government uh, is keen to slowly and methodically bring this issue back onto the agenda as something for Australians to discuss. And we think that as the Queen comes to the twilight of her reign, it's now the appropriate time to begin that discussion as Australians start to think, well, what comes next for us after Queen Elizabeth either passes away or, or hands on the reign to Prince Charles? So mm. it's the right time for us to begin this discussion and my role is to educate and lead that discussion in Australia. So you like the Queen, but you're not, not too keen on Prince Charles? Look, uh, I think that the, the monarchy has been wonderful for Australia um, and the system of government that we have has served us well. But mm. at some point in time, the children have to leave home and Australia is now a grown-up, mature nation. Uh, <laughs> we have our own unique identity and culture. Uh, we're making our own way in the world. We govern ourselves independently and many Australians believe it's time for us to have a serious discussion about appointing one of our own as our head of state in the future. And you've seen other Commonwealth nations like Barbados last year make this important decision. Uh, they did that in cooperation with the royal family. In fact, members of the royal family flew over to Barbados for the handover ceremony. So I think you can still be respectful of the role the monarchy has played, but mm. at the same time realise the independence of our nation. So what is the current polling then um, on Australians uh, either supporting or wanting to sever uh, ties? Um, look, if you ask most Australians, uh, it's, it's around about 45% um, support for Australia becoming a republic. Um, about... 35% uh, want to maintain the monarchy and the rest are undecided. Um, mm. And the key is obviously the undecided voters. Uh, the last time we had a referendum on this issue was 1999. Unfortunately, yeah. it wasn't successful, but there's been a new generation of Australians that have come on to the voting rolls in our country. Uh, a lot of newly arrived migrants that don't understand that the Queen is our head of state or indeed that it's possible to have an Australian in that role and that's why we need an education campaign in the initial stages to inform people of those alternatives. Mm. Um, what's the timeline for this then in terms of um, a, a referendum on this? Yeah, look, it's not a priority of the government uh, at the moment. Um, we've got obviously dealing with cost of living pressures, um, the energy crisis that we've had um, and the role of a new government. In terms of constitutional reform, our initial priority will be recognising Indigenous Australians in our constitution. They have inhabited these lands for 40 to 50,000 years, but they're not recognised and mentioned in our constitution. That's our priority, and we'll attempt to deal with that in the first couple of years of office. And hopefully that will be successful, and Australians will see that the next natural step for our country to take is then to move on to the issue of a republic. So I dare say that we're looking at um, three to four years away before we put this question to the Australian people again. But we need to begin the conversation now because it's quite a complicated argument. Yeah. And not e it's not easy to get a, a referendum up in Australia and change our constitution. No, I'm sure it's not. But what, what happens if you go through all this work and you have the referendum and, and you lose a referendum? Well, that happened in 1999 mm. um, when there was a lot of depressed Republicans for a while. <laughs> um <laughs> We'll have to we'll have to just get on. Um, the the last referendum failed in Australia, um, not because there wasn't support for a public. There was close to sixty percent support, mm. but there was division amongst those that supported a republic around the model of appointment. Um, the proposed model was that the head of state would be appointed by a two thirds majority of the parliament voting. Um, there was a lot of people that said and called this a politician's republic, and right. they wanted to have a say 
So they wanted to vote similar to the Irish model where they vote on who their head of state will be. Mm. Um, so we've got to sort all of those issues out around the division associated with the model before we put this up for a referendum. And that's the role that I'm going to play in trying to unite Australians around a particular model and hopefully make it successful next time. It's really interesting to talk to you, um, at Matt Thistlewaite. Thank you so much uh, for giving us your time. Let's hear from the other side of the argument. Jeremy Mann is Secretary of Victorian Young Liberals and spokesperson for the Australian Monarchist League. He joins us now. Morning, Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. Can you hear me? Morning. How yeah, are you? Very That's good. Good evening where I am, but uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. Great to speak to you. Uh, why do you want to keep not the Queen in the first instance, but it, it will obviously then become Prince Charles? What's the argument for keeping Australia's constitutional monarchy? Well, not only has the uh, constitutional monarchy that we've inherited from, from Britain and now made our own been such a, a fantastic institution um, throughout our nation's history, but at the same time as well, what it does is it keeps politicians, uh, our nation's politicians in check, uh, keeps uh, balances on our constitution. And in fact, just going off the comments made by uh, the assistant minister there, um, Australia already has its own Australian head of state in the governor general who is our representative, the Queen's representative, in fact, uh, exercises all the constitutional powers that the Queen has uh, in, in, in keeping those politicians in check uh, and ensuring that our nation uh, has a continuity and is stable all the time. But do you really want to be subordinate to another country? Australia is a proud, successful country. It stands on its own two feet as a, as a key player in the world. Do you really want to be subordinate to, a, to another country just for reasons of history? Well, we're not subordinate, and it doesn't just come down to reasons of history. We are an independent nation. Uh, we have been, like I said, the Governor-General, uh, who is the Queen's representative in Australia, always acts independently. Uh, we saw in 1975 uh, this happening exactly the case with the uh, dismissal of then Prime Minister Gough Whitlam, where the Governor-General of the time, Sir John Kerr, actually made the decision to dismiss the Prime Minister without consulting uh, the Palace or the Queen. This was our system working as it should, and uh, you know that's the way it should be. Do you think you'll win it? Because we're, we're talking to Matt Thistlethwaite. He said it's Labour policy now over there, so there's going to be a referendum. There'll be one about Indigenous people first, but there will be one in three or four years. It's been a sort of relatively close to a 50-50 split. They lost in 1999. Do you feel confident that Australia would vote together to keep the monarchy? Are you there, Jeremy? Can you can you hear us? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know the, the monarchy. Yes, yes, yes. So the monarchy in Australia is as popular as it ha has ever been. In fact, um, especially amongst young people as well, there's a growing resentment amongst our nation's youth towards uh, political figures. Uh, we've seen during COVID as well uh, that there's been a potential abuse of power there. And I think that uh, the, the great thing about the system of constitutional monarchy is that there is that overarching figure that is apolitical, that is uh, away from traditional political parties and isn't subservient to their ideologies as well. Um, with a president and, and the model that's been put forward by the Australian Republic movement, in fact, uh, what that provides is just more power for politicians to give uh, their mates the top job and, and become the president of our country. We don't want that. We're perfectly happy uh, with the constitutional monarchy in the way that it is. Okay, fascinating stuff. Great to speak to you, Jeremy.